Hey, welcome to today's video. Today we're taking a look at another GDPR violation case. This one involves a dating uh, app and chat app um, by a company that I'm going to call Canoodles. <laughs> I think that's the interpretation. So the Canoodles data breach uh, and whether that data breach constituted a GDPR violation and if so, the ramifications. Uh, and so I'm Richard Chapo. I'm an attorney in San Diego, California, and I represent online businesses and have been doing so for the past 20 years or so. So the GDPR, of course, is the privacy regulation that went into effect in Europe in May 2018. It is a killer. Um, now, in this case, we didn't really have a situation where it was a debatable GDPR violation. Uh, the violation was pretty clear. Uh, the question really was uh, the conduct of the defendant and how that impacted the ultimate fine in the case. So, uh, Canoodles is a dating and chat app. People join and then they go online and pursue romance, I'm assuming. Um, but when they sign up, it's typical for an app of this sort. They enter a username and a password. And the problem in this case was the passwords uh, were stored in a database and they were stored as text. And so if somebody hacks the system and they get to those passwords, well, they can just copy them directly and then repost them elsewhere, uh, sell them on the black market, or perhaps go to sites that some of the users are visiting, try those passwords, uh, you know, use key log keyword logger software to track people and maybe access their bank accounts and things of that sort. So pretty much bad news. Now under the GDPR, you're supposed to uh, treat those passwords a little differently. Uh, you're supposed to secure them. One way might be through encryption. Another way might be through uh, anonymization, uh, things of this sort. If you've ever used a software or a password system like LastPass or something of this sort, that's what they're doing. So if, for instance, in this case, we hadn't seen the passwords encrypted, if you access them through the database, all you would see were a bunch of numbers, numbers and signals that didn't really mean anything. They were useless. You couldn't go punch them in anywhere and have them work. Um, but unfortunately, Noodles, Canoodles didn't do that. And so uh, pretty clear GDPR violation. Now, the conduct of Canoodles is very interesting in this case. The German uh, supervisory authority is considered pretty aggressive uh, amongst the EU countries, and it will go after com uh, companies and fine companies um, fairly aggressively. And so in this case, Noodles, uh, Canoodles self-reported the breach. They came forward and said, hey, we had a data breach. You know, here's what's going on. Now, under the GDPR, you're supposed to do that. But all indications are that after Canoodles met its statutory requirement, it actually went above and beyond. And it worked very openly with the German SA to identify the problem, solutions. Uh, it, it made major efforts to notify its uh, users and to try to you know, provide guidance on what they should do, what they should be concerned about. Basically, this was a company that stepped forward and tried to do its best in a bad situation. And so for those, uh, those of us in the legal field, we were kind of interested to see what the fine would be. Um, because, you know, does coming forward, acknowledging the problem and trying to fix it, did that help um, when that, that fine was issued? And the answer was, it appears to have. Now we're talking about 1.8 million people potentially having their data exposed. They certainly had their passwords exposed, and that, of course, can lead to other data exposures. So we're talking about a sizable group of people here. We're also talking about the German supervisory authority, who can be a wee bit aggressive. Uh, yet in this case... Uh, the fine was only 20,000 euros. Uh, now, 20,000 euros might sound like a lot, but we're, again, we're talking 1.8 million people here. That's a lot of people. Uh, now, to contrast that, uh, if you go to our page on YouTube, to our playlist page, uh, you'll see a playlist for GDPR cases. In there, uh, I posted a video about a, a hospital in Portugal. Uh, who had a data breach, and they did not self-report. Uh, apparently, there was an investigation that found out what was happening, and uh, in that case, the uh, fine was 400,000 euros, and we were talking about the records of far fewer people than we are here with uh, Canoodles. Now, those records involved health uh, records, so you know, those are a little more sensitive data, and you can see the supervisory authority being a little more aggressive in that area. But nonetheless, uh, you know, if this case had arisen and you told me uh, Canoodles would only face a fine of 20,000 euros, I, I would have been surprised. Uh, and so uh, the lesson in this case may well be that if you do suffer a data breach, you know, being open with the supervisory authority might be uh, certainly a strategy worth, worth considering. <laughs> because if you're dead to rights on the violation, well, 
at that point, you know, you're really looking for empathy uh, and mercy, and maybe you should go out and earn that. Uh, so anyways, that's it for today's uh, GDPR violation case. If you have any questions or comments, post them below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, consider giving us a thumbs up. If you did not enjoy the video, I feel shame. Uh, again, we are going to be publishing all kinds of videos on the GDPR and particularly cases coming down, so feel free to subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching, and have yourself a good one.